difference in our community, in your organizations, and all and together. Here today are 20 different dynamic women coming from different agencies, bringing leadership to each. We make the world go round. The Federation hopes that there will be many other ways to collaborate and support the amazing work each of you do. To the award winners, Mazel Tov. All of you have set the standard and make us so proud and privileged to be with you on this first. introduce our keynote speaker today, Viola Sturman. I'm standing this wonderful big crowd who came to honor our distinguished women and the group of distinguished women, each of whose has a life story to tell how they got to the point of being honored and what led them to a life of commitment, giving, and working toward the better men of their fellow men. I feel honored to tell you about my own life, the road that led me to this moment of my life, the road that led me to understand, to cherish the cause that we are all here to celebrate. I try to look back on my life that is mine, and see a movie in black and white, and that maybe because the only concrete photographs that I have seen of my past were sent to me by my mother and brother, and they are now grays and whites, faded, reminding me of the depth and length of time that passed. How did I leave Hungary and why? In order for you to see and feel the circumstances, I must briefly take a short detour that will take you back to the life and some of its short, concise historical background that formed the little girls named Viola, Violka, and Vilci three endearing terms that my family, my loving family and friends called me. Though I was a little girl, my memory goes back to my beginning in nursery school. Those years were the years when Hitler, with that little macabre mustache imitated by his followers, turned the world upside down. My father, Deje, one of 10,000 Jewish men in Hungary, including my two uncles and most of their Jewish friends, had to serve in a labor camp to substitute for the German men whose assignment was to conquer the world to satisfy the appetite of Hitler and his personally selected henchmen. I remember the time when my father came back for a few days to see his family, at which time my brother was conceived in 1943. March 19, 1944, on my birthday, Germany occupied Hungary through the Eastern train station in Budapest by the thousands infantry, 
motorcycles, jeeps. And I remember walking in front of the station, my father tightly holding my hand. His grip let me know the seriousness of the move movement that were happening around us. Life should have been hearts and roses and simple and happy for that little girl. There is a veil on the face of my memory that does not allow me to remember many things, but what I am saying comes from a very young child through recollections. That was the last time I saw my dad. Spending the rest of the time in labor cramps, he died in Germany, in Gunzkirchen, of hunger, just a few days before his camp was liberated. Times were hard for my mother, just like most of the young women whose husbands were taken away. To raise children during the war and after, feeding the family worrying about food, sanitary conditions, Food was scarce and conditions scary. In the city of war torn Budapest, where dead bodies like mannequins were lying on the sidewalks, dead horses with body part missing were there because people had horse meat at the time to save their lives and save them from starving to death. Life was scary. My brother was just a few months old at this time. He never forgot his need for a father he never met. Missed the existence of a power that could have guided him in life. Every turn in his life, when any action was called for, he wished for his father's presence, his guidance. The restrictive social system that came after the war the lonely young boys, aloneness, surrounded by women, his sister and mother, never gave him the full confidence to truly overcome the obstacles that were present in the country. He was a wonderful son, brother, and nephew, to aunts and uncles as well. When I left Hungary, he was burdened by responsibilities that would have been mine. My brother was 12 years old when I left Hungary, and he's taking care of our grandmother, later our mother, and aunt emotionally and with physical care that was needed in later years, besides his paternal and spousal responsibilities, turned to be an unselfish and reliable man with an admirable, supportive life to the elderly family of his many years later. Where did I find the courage to live? How did the opportunity present itself? I just completed my liberal education that prepared me for a legal career, but on account of having come from a bourgeois background, which of course ridiculous, with all the needs, the little food, and only the most necessary life supplies, I was not accepted to law school. This summer was 1956, a revolution. The revolution that echoed all over the West, tried to change the country and get rid of the Soviet occupation. Of course, that is now old history. But because of that, thousands and thousands of Hungarians took the chance to try to cross the borders that were less policed and had a light breathing safe for some days when history seemed to have changed its face. Many of those Hungarians succeeded, creating not just a useful but outstanding life in a new country. My girlfriend's uncle, his name was Gabor, who was always a forward-thinking man with an intellectual outlook, 
decided to take a chance at the already more dangerous time after the Russian troops took back the revolution's results from the people and the borders were again almost as tight as before the uprising. He hired a truck that had a real permit to go to a small town at the border to pick potatoes. And once, it was hoped, when it got to its destination, crossing the borders could become a reality. It took two hours for my girlfriends and myself to persuade my mother to let me go with them in the morning. What was at stake? Our possibility of another life that offered the dream of freedom and opportunities that were only heard of through censored books and whispered truths that people took chances under the threat of prison sentence to speak about. Or, as in our case, the possibility of the unknown with the dangerous, dangerous consequences of being killed. After the pressure of explaining the price of possibly getting to America and living the American dream, my mother relented. She could not, for my sake, even with chances taken with my life, pass up a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The uncle gave the option to friends and relatives who mostly lived in the same apartment building or nearby to be at the rented truck before the true daylight of 7 a.m. This was the end of November, still dusk. Of course, all this had to be done in the utmost secrecy and action and before the appointed time when every one single fly, file, a minute or less in between, arrived to the bus. Everyone got on the bus. Everyone was on, no police in sight. The driver gave the signal started the engine, and with no hesitation, accelerated to go on its sacred, secret mission. Everyone was on, except a friend of ours who must have overslept, running, hand-waving for us to stop. But a mission as dangerous as this was at that second could not be risked. So the truck rolled on with the hopeful passengers, but the now hopeless friend forced to stay behind. I did not, nor will ever forget the slowly disappearing figure whose hope has slowly receded with the slowing of his speed and the waving of his hand. So we left, so I left leaving my family and friends with such a feeling of emptiness and yearning for my presence, and love that they felt with my absence from their presence, that later on in their letters so beautifully expressed to me, and me, living with only looking forward with hope to a better future, but also missing that special love and care for a long time that they had for me. Years of challenges, schools, marriage, children, friends, and everything that came bundled together, turned into a life that was lived with hope, that turned into reality of the hope for dreams. Lots of years passed, and this younger turned into me today. Lots of years passed. I'm now surrounded with a loving husband, children and grandchildren, and many friends. Now that you understand a little bit of my history and the forces that shaped my beginnings, I must tell you what and who helped to make this girl who I became. 
with everything that I grew up with the, within Hungary, there was one simple characteristic that I possessed, something that I was proud of, something that sometimes put me into compromising positions, something that at times made me a stranger among others, challenging me for the most unexpected sources, something I was born with, something I always could rely on to make me loved or unfortunately hated, but never could refuse. That is me being Jewish. From a little girl's first remembered moments of the awareness that something that made me a different person, something that gave me a type of advantage, the recognition and intellect of a Jewish person. Little did I know that by privilege of being Jewish, I was also looked upon by other Jews as one of them, and later on looked upon as a young woman in a new country, giving her a new possibility just like them our fellow Jews. When I was a young girl and my brother a baby, our family's needs were overwhelming in war-torn Europe. I heard the word joint many times. The joint that sent packages and clothes to the abandoned Jewish families. The joint that looked out for the Jewish people of Europe. We ate the canned foods, the nourishing chocolate squares, sharing the bars among many, securing our survival that was sent through them. The Joint Distribution Committee that was the overseas arm of the North American Jewish Committee, which was founded in 1914 as a distribution source for funds from American Jews to Palestine. As the European Jewish lives were more and more in the line, the line of danger in the 1920s and 30s, like my grandparents and their children, our parents. These were the years the American federations have joined forces with overseas agencies, the United Palestine Appeal, and the Joint Distribution Committee. So by the time I remembered the name Joint, it was an active arm of the Federations of American Jews who embarked on a massive campaign to rescue and rehabilitate Jews living in discrimination and distress. The United Jewish Appeal has been active since was born as a response in 1939 to Kristallnacht program, uniting the United Palestine Appeal and the Joint Distribution Committee. Is there a question of giving or not giving to our cause of helping and saving Jewish lives? Should the question even arise, or should some of us forget that our own grandmother and great-great-grandmother did come for the hope and reality of a new land? We had, with the assistance of money and all the social help that our Federation give, gave and gives, enriched and enriches the new members of our society, and with their own commitments and their descendants' commitment, our society in America has been bettered. Because of our federations, we became a generation of strength and vibrancy that we have achieved in our own American society. And every day still, there is someone or some group who is being assisted in need and given the opportunity to be part of our creative, resourceful society. That is why the United Jewish Appeal, our philanthropy is important. Do I need to go any further? 
the women, the distinguished women who we are celebrating today, whose life, whose ancestry, and whose grandparents gave the example of upstanding Jewish values and made them understand tikkun olam. Some are sitting here in the glow of recognitions for the help that they have done to assist in our society, in our causes, in our temples, schools, and in their volunteering in our organizations, unselfishly giving time and money for the betterment of many. Is there a better way to understand the importance of our reach, reaching out to people whose hope will never die? We can't let it die, but make it a reality. Is there a better way to understand our commitment and our cause than looking into the eye of your current chair of philanthropy, myself, whose past and present should clearly, without any further explanation, answer any question or doubt that you have or ever had about our commitments? Thank you. It's my pleasure to announce the Women of Distinction of 2012.